Hello, my name is John Kerrigan. I am a part-time lecturer three in the math department at the Rutgers Graduate School of Education. And I am Christina Bukulko. I'm the Associate Director for Teaching and Learning Analytics at um, Otter at Rutgers University. And I also teach part-time in the mathematics department in New Brunswick. We are here today to do a screencast overview of our fall 2022 research study entitled Syllabus 2.0, Using Video to Make the Syllabus Active. So thinking about the syllabus, right, math instructors and really all instructors are spending a huge amount of time on the syllabus, creating a learning experience for students throughout the semester. And we want to make sure that our students are getting the most out of it. So there has been a, quite a few studies on the syllabus and the development has really focused on you know, the elements to include within the syllabus, how to include that professor information, the course information, the resources such as disability information or student support services, and then of course, grading and also technology requirements. So some of the studies have examined how these components influence a student's perceptions of their instructors. So thinking about how this one document at the very beginning of course, that first glance of the instructor kind of impacts their perceptions. Um, all of these studies have really looked at a static paper-based syllabi. There's been more recent research on syllabus uh, development focused on accessibility, universal design for learning, making sure that we are infusing diversity, equity, and inclusion across those various components of the syllabus to create a more inclusive classroom. Um, and then also including social, social justice elements uh, in the syllabus as well. So thinking about all of this different information that is available, all the research that has been done on the syllabus and how it affects um, the student's perception of the instructor, there's currently still a lack of research on how to present the syllabus in a way that engages students in learning about the course, thinking about how to uh, create an active learning environment for students with that syllabus. So our study, we had uh, a few research questions. The first one was, which components of a video syllabus do students access the most frequently? Uh, then we thought about uh, our second research question was, what are students' attitudes toward an undergraduate math course after reviewing its syllabi? And then the third, how does the syllabus modality, a graphic or a video syllabus, impacts students' post-test performance on syllabus content. Our sample and setting. We did our study at Rutgers University New Brunswick campus in fall 2022. Our course that we chose was Math 115, which is a one-semester pre-calculus course called Pre-Calculus College Mathematics. Each section was approximately 86 students, and we were very fortunate that our students were all first year, first semester students in the School of Engineering. The course content includes that of a traditional pre-calculus course, polynomial functions, rational functions, exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric, et cetera. Um, we focus a lot on how to graph those functions, properties of the functions, and how to manipulate them algebraically as well. Our courses ran as flipped classrooms, so students were able to watch the lecture videos prior to coming to lecture, and then the in-class work was active problem solving and work with peers and learning assistants. And for that reason, we thought about using a video syllabus, as Christina described, as a way to engage the, syllab the students in learning about the syllabus in a manner that was maybe more familiar to them since the rest of their course experience largely relied on videos. When we did our study, we gave students either a graphic syllabus or a video narrated version 
of the same graphic syllabus. When we made our syllabus, we used uh, best practices from the research on syllabus design, which included graphic elements, the, a picture of the instructor, a pie chart breakdown of the grading scheme, using a warm tone, encouraging language, things like that. We randomly assigned one section so that all students got the graphic syllabus as a PDF, and then the other section got the same exact syllabus, but presented in a series of short video clips that were narrated by the instructor. So you could see we did a little screencast down here back in September with the instructor's face on the bottom and the same exact syllabus just narrated. For our data collection process, we had the students do this outside of the classroom, which was different. Normally, the syllabus takes up a lot of the, the first class meeting, but we had students engage with this outside of the room after the first class. And then following that, students took a syllabus quiz on the content of the syllabus on Canvas. And this was a 10 question quiz, all multiple choice that addressed some of the items we really wanted students to understand. And that included the fact that our exams involve calculators and, and what was an acceptable calculator, where to get help, when to get help, ways to study, um, things like that. We also developed a syllabus survey on Qualtrics using an existing tool in the literature. And we gave this survey to students a couple classes in so that we had a, a firm roster at that point and time for the students to, to review and digest the syllabus. And this contained about 10 questions that were on a one to five scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And then two open ended questions where students were tasked with reading their level of agreement with various aspects of the syllabus, as well as course perceptions and some general feedback on the design and structure of the syllabus. We were fortunate in that working with Canvas, we were able to get additional analytics. Since we placed the videos on Kaltura, we were able to export some additional metrics on video watching analytics once that was completed. And then to analyze our data, we did a bunch of t-tests to see if there was a difference between sections on syllabus quiz performance, you know, having gotten either a video syllabus or a graphic syllabus. We ran some descriptives, mean, median, standard deviation, things like that. We ran cross tabs. We also looked at uh, t-tests between survey questions to see if there was a significant difference on individual questions between sections just to, to mine down a little bit further. We downloaded exported video watching analytics and, and ran some tests on those. And then for the short responses on Qualtrics, we also did a little bit of open coding to look for emerging themes. So to answer the first research question, which was which components of a video syllabus do students access the most frequently? We looked at the analytics within Kaltura where the videos were. Uh, the videos were constructed as short videos uh, per best practice uh, with video creation. Um, so you can see the, the lengths of each of the videos here. And the lengths did vary a bit depending on uh, the topics, uh, which needed a little bit more explanation for some rather than others. The chart on the right hand side is from Kaltura, which gives the average total completion rate. Uh, so this is the uh, first, you know, by student, the average completion rate of each of the videos. So you could see, for instance, that part one, the part one video, which was on the course info in your success, had an average completion rate of 73.18%. Um, and then it steadily went down with each of the parts. So we could see from this that actually it, it didn't really seem as much that um, they were concerned about a particular section um, of the content of the syllabus, uh, but the completion rate did decrease as they went through um, the different videos. We were also able to export um, additional user engagement data. And we looked at the total number of plays as well. Uh, so that average completion rate on the last slide did show that 
perhaps the, the students were not um, watching that grading video through more times uh, for a longer amount of time. But here that we see with the total number of plays that the part four video, which was on the textbook and grading was actually played uh, a total of 55 times by the students. Um, so that, you know, they were obviously choosing um, as we uh, hypothesize looking at that grading, which tends to be a concern for students. We also looked at the uh, perception survey um, for each of the questions. So student perceptions of the course were generally positive for both the graphic and the video syllabus. Uh, so this does combine um, both the uh, graphic syllabus and the um, video syllabus and the mean is given in the circle. And then the distribution of the responses can be seen um, on the chart for each of the questions. The one question that was slightly lower than the others, uh, the fourth one down, um, is that three has that mean of 3.62. The syllabus was designed in a way that makes me want to read it. Uh, we do uh, we we do wonder if part of this was just because of the video syllabus not really having a reading portion of it. Um, but this was, you know, this was uh, lower than the the other questions. But in general, the per, the student perceptions were very high. So for that perception survey, on average, looking at the graphic versus video syllabi and comparing the the answers to the perception survey items, there was no statistically significant difference except for the syllabus was easy to navigate and find the information I needed. This was actually rated higher for the graphic syllabus than the video. So the graphic had a mean of 4.20 and the video had a mean of 3.72. And this was a statistically significant difference. So students did feel that the that graphic syllabus was easier to navigate. We also had one question on the survey that asked students to give one word to describe the syllabus. And we made a word cloud just for uh, like a visual overview of what that kind of looked like. And while most of the feedback was positive, we found that the, the words that they used the most often were informative, organized, um, concise, and understandable and clear. Those kind of popped out as um, some of the more popular ways to describe the syllabus in one word. For research question three, we looked at the syllabus quiz, that 10 question quiz on Canvas, uh, assessing students' uh, understanding of course content and, and, and rules and all that. And we found that there was no significant difference between groups on overall performance. Um, we, we mined down further to item level and weren't able to see any difference at the item level either. So um, we, we found that the modality in which the syllabus was delivered did not impact their post-test performance that on the syllabus content. So as I mentioned, we, we went to the individual questions did not find any differences between the two groups. So what, what do we take away from this? This is our first syllabus study, and we're currently working on another one that we're hoping we could present next year. We, we were reflecting back on why we saw what we might have seen. And we, we feel that since our students were all first year students, that maybe what might have helped them get more out of the syllabus and, and be more involved with it is a little bit more explicit instruction on what a syllabus is and why it's important. When the syllabus was introduced, we did explain the purpose of the study and what we were trying to do, but it was a, an assignment for outside of class. So we were wondering if it could have been delivered as more of a learning experience and some more strategic 
input from the teacher as to why students should take it seriously and, and how they should use it to be successful in the course. We also noted that Kaltura has some limitations with regard to having students access things. You know, they might have viewed things on an incognito browser or there might have been a pop-up locker or things like that that might not have shown up properly in the data set that we could not account for. Anecdotally, we had students come up to us and say, I don't want a video syllabus. I want a, a graphic syllabus so that I can use control F and just find what I need versus scrolling through a three or four minute video, trying to find what I need. It, it just takes more time. So that made us think about possibly involving choice in a future iteration of the study. And one other thing we noticed too was the first time we gave the syllabus quiz and survey, we did it at the end of class as a way to wrap things up. And we found engagement to be more challenging at the end when there's five minutes left and we're the last one standing between them and catching a bus or, or going to the next thing. So when we did it again, we ended up doing it at the start of class where we had a more captive audience. So the current study, so we we have taken uh, what we learned in that fall study and thought about how to change it a little bit for this spring. Um, so currently we're running another iteration of the study that that considers more how to make that syllabus an active learning experience. So we found that that including just that the um, video the video syllabus did not create a more active environment for the students. Uh, so what we are do currently doing is including um, social annotations on hypothesis for the graphic syllabus, and then using PlayPosit, which embeds questions into the video syllabus to again, create more of a engagement, having the students actually do something with that syllabus and ensuring accountability. And we feel that this extra layer of engagement and accountability might address some of the shortcomings we had with our current study and also is in line with the, the recommendations in the research base that we don't want the syllabus to be seen as a contract or, or something passive. We're just trying to make it more of an active experience, active experience for students where they actually learn something from it. Thank you so much.